Hello, everybody. This is Tech G back with another video. And in this video, we're going to be discussing as to whether or not the IT job market is oversaturated. So let's get into it. All right. So let's have a real talk about something that's been making the rounds on forums, Reddit threads, LinkedIn posts, and tech YouTube channels. Is the IT job market oversaturated? Now, if you've been hearing people say things like too many people are getting into IT or you'll never land a job unless you already have experience or everybody in their mama has a CompTIA A plus certification now, then you're probably wondering, is there still room for me in tech or is the ship already full and sailing? Well, let me go ahead and break this down piece by piece so you can have a transparent understanding of where the IT job market stands today, who's struggling, who's thriving, and most importantly, what you can do to stand out. So with that being said, let's go. All right, so let's start with the fact more people than ever are trying to break into IT with boot camps, online courses, certification programs like CompTIA, AWS, Google, and Microsoft, plus tons of free YouTube tutorials. It's never been more accessible to learn IT skills. Then add to that the effect of the pandemic, which pushed many folks to reevaluate their careers. There were tons of people who have pivoted into IT looking for remote work, stability, and better pay. And all that makes sense, right? So yes, there is more competition. That part is real. But here's the part most people leave out. Demand is also sky high. All right. So what you got to understand is tech isn't one giant job market. It's thousands of niches. So when people say the IT job market, they talk about it like it's one big space. But the truth is IT is huge. And here are just a few niches that are under the IT umbrella. You got IT support and help desk, cybersecurity, networking, cloud computing, software development, data analytics, DevOps, artificial intelligence and machine learning and database administration, web development, IT project management, system administration, VoIP and unified communications and digital forensics and a whole bunch of other stuff. And each of these has its own demands, requirements, career paths and entry points. So when someone says IT is oversaturated, ask yourself, what part of IT? Because that's like saying healthcare is oversaturated. Are we talking about doctors, nurses, radiologists, hospital administrators? You see the problem here? All right, so let's talk about the entry level bottleneck. So let's go ahead and be honest. If there is a part of IT that's starting to feel crowded, it's the entry level IT support roles, especially jobs like tier one help desk, desktop support, IT technician and field support tech. Now, these roles are traditionally the foot in the door for many people entering IT. And since certifications like CompTIA A plus are now accessible, a lot of folks are aiming for these same jobs at the same time. And this creates a bottleneck. Employers, they get flooded with resumes and entry level. This doesn't always mean that it is easy to get. But here's the twist. Employers are still struggling to find good talent. How can there be too many job seekers and a tech talent shortage? Well, welcome to the paradox. So many companies aren't just looking for someone with a certification. They're looking for people who can troubleshoot under pressure, communicate clearly with non-technical users and show initiative and problem solving skills. And they also have some hands on experience, even if it's a home lab. So while there may be a lot of applicants out there, there aren't always a lot of qualified applicants. And that is your opportunity to shine. All right, next, let's talk about oversaturation versus unprepared applicants. So some people are flooding the job market with a single certification and no lab experience, or they have resumes full of buzzwords, but no substance, or they have a cookie cutter cover letter with no personality or little to no soft skills or zero understanding of what the role actually requires. Now, this isn't meant to shame anyone but to highlight the reality. Getting an entry-level certification like a is a great start, but it is just the start. If that's where your journey ends, then you're going to blend in with the crowd. And in a competitive market, blending in is the same as being invisible. Now, when it comes to employers, they want proof of your ability. Now, certifications, they can show you how to pass a test, but employers want proof that you can solve problems in the real world. So how do you stand out? 
Well, here are some high impact ways. First thing you can do is start building home labs. So you can set up your own lab with virtual machines like Windows and Linux VMs. You can play with Active Directory. You can set up routers and firewalls by playing with tools like PFSense. And you can practice with scripting by using PowerShell and Bash. And when you do all of that, you want to document it, post it on LinkedIn, create a blog and talk about it in your interviews. You also want to go out there and try to do some real world projects. So go out there and offer to help a small business with IT support, volunteer for your local nonprofit, set up a network for your church or fix old computers and document the process. Now, this stuff that you're doing, it doesn't have to be paid. It just has to be real because we're trying to get you to get documented experience to match your certifications. And then you want to go out there and show your soft skills. So tech alone isn't enough. You need to be able to explain tech to a non-technical user. You need to be able to handle a frustrated customer with grace. You need to be able to work on a team and communicate clearly because these traits are in high demand and they are often overlooked by those of you out there trying to get a tech job. All right, so let's talk about some niches that are not oversaturated, at least not as of yet. So while entry-level IT support is competitive, other areas of IT are still hungry for talent, and here are a few. So you got cybersecurity. So the world has more devices, more threats, and not enough people to secure them. From SOC analysts to risk management professionals, cybersecurity is going to forever be in demand. You have cloud computing. You got AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud skills are always in high demand, and companies that want people who can migrate, optimize, and secure cloud environments. You got DevOps and automation. So if you can write scripts, automate deployments, and work with CI, CD tools, and you're already a rare breed. You have data analytics. So businesses, they want insights. So if you can crunch data, build dashboards, and tell stories with numbers, then you are valuable. There's AI and machine learning. So as generative AI grows, so does the need for people who understand its risk, ethics, and how to actually apply it in business. And then there's compliance and governance. So as privacy laws tighten, companies will need help staying compliant. In GRC, our governance, risk, and compliance, that is a growing field. All right, the next thing you need to understand is tech is evolving and so should you. You cannot approach IT like it's 2010. The market has changed. To succeed in today's IT job market, you're gonna to need to be strategic about your path and do not just try to learn everything just because somebody on YouTube told you to go learn this certification. You need to build hands-on experience early, so start playing with labs, get some volunteer work or do some side projects. You need to learn how to communicate and document your work. You need to embrace continuous learning because IT changes quickly. And do not wait for a perfect three to five year plan just go ahead and start taking action now and you can course correct along the way. All right. So another thing that you need to keep in mind is that remote work has changed the game. So before 2020, most IT support jobs were local. Now a company in Texas, they might hire someone from Florida or even India for the same job. And that means more opportunity, but it also creates more competition across the globe. So to stay competitive, you're going to have to level up your professional presence online by using LinkedIn, GitHub, or setting up some type of portfolio. You're going to have to work on your communication skills when you're doing interviews on Zoom, because that is different than doing interviews in person. Then you're going to have to have the ability to self-manage because no one's going to be watching over your shoulder remotely. All right, so let me go ahead and wrap this up. Is the IT market oversaturated? Well, no, it's not. The entire IT job market is not oversaturated, but some parts of it, especially entry-level support roles, are overcrowded and highly competitive. So what does this mean for you? It means you can still get in, but you need to be intentional. You can't just get a certification and hope for the best. You're going to have to treat your job hunt like a project, meaning you're going to have to go out there and do research on what jobs are in demand. You're going to have to plan your learning path accordingly. You're going to have to go out there and start building real projects, get out there and start networking like crazy, and then craft your story for interviews because there's room in IT for smart, curious, and hardworking people. And if you're listening to this video, then you might be one of them. Now, it's easy to get discouraged when you see posts from people saying that they've applied to 200 plus jobs and got nothing. But what you do not see is how strong or weak their resume is, whether they built the lab or done any projects, how do they show up when they do their online or in-person job interviews. And what you also don't see is if they've been networking or just relying on job boards. So the truth is, there are still amazing opportunities in IT. 
but they go to the people who prepare, adapt, and persist. So don't panic, don't quit, and definitely do not let the fear of oversaturation stop you from going after what could be a life-changing career.